for a balloonist, to change altitude, you need to drop a lot of ballast. So what's the ballast? You have water, you have sand, and when everything goes bad, you have your radio instruments, your computers, and <laughs> everything that you have to throw out to gain weight and climb. But in life, if we want to change our altitude in our mind or in our spirit, we also have to drop ballast. And what's the ballast we have to drop? Well, the ballast we have to drop is certainties, external safety, habits, routine, paradigms, axiomas, dogmas, all these things that keep us prisoner of one way to think, everything that keeps us prisoner of one way to behave, everything that keeps us prisoner of the direction of the winds of life. So, of course, changing altitude, this is not just something theoretical we have to try to do to be more happy in life. It's something we, want, we have to implement if we want to succeed in what we try. In our case, we had to admit that our strategy was completely wrong. We had to change altitude in our strategy. We should stop to believe that we could fly around the world in flying high and fast in the jet streams. Not at all. We needed to build a balloon that was very flexible, that allowed us to use every altitude, play with the winds, maybe stay a long time at low level before climbing to take another high altitude wind that would have a better direction. Flexibility was the key word for us. So we actually built a third balloon. And Breitling still supported us in doing this third balloon. We built another cabin. We used another type of gas. We used other type of burners. We studied with the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale, the Swiss Institute of Technology, a new way to insulate our balloon and have a better efficiency, uh, thermal efficiency, and stay in the air for, for a longer time. Here you see, I don't want to focus on too many technical things because I, I'm convinced you know all that, but you just see in the middle this sphere that is full of helium, and in the lower part, the hot air cone to hit the helium at night, and on the top, there was this little gas balloon that was supporting a tent to insulate the, the, the fabric even better uh, to, keep, to keep it cold during the day and to keep it hot during the night. So we had at the end what I believe was the best balloon ever built. And during this time, we had big competitors who were trying to achieve this flight before we would. Competitors as Richard Branson, Steve Fawcett, Dick Rutan, who is, I think, here in the room. And all these people were very, very perseverant, like us. They had failures, like us. And exactly like us, they started again. So we were really in a race where it would be difficult to succeed, because so many teams were really efficient. Why did we succeed at the end? I think our success has a lot to do with teamwork. And also the fact that coming from a small country like Switzerland, with the smallest team, I was probably a little bit like David in front of Goliath. It gives a lot of incentive to try to have more imagination, more creativity. And speaking about the, the teamwork, needs to maybe stop for a couple of minutes. It will allow me to present you Brian Jones. Normally, we like to give speeches to, together because we've made this flight together. It was very important the relation between the people in our team. Because if you change the strategy, if you change the technology, you always need to have people who will accept to change all their paradigms and adapt to new situations. You need very flexible people. You need people who trust each other a lot. In our case, what did we do? Well, we trained with another definition of communication. You know, very often, we believe that communication is about sharing ideas or sharing facts. And in this case, if we believe it's only this, each one's going to fight for his own ideas, to promote his own success, to promote his own power or whatever. And very often, if you put two very intelligent people together with very good ideas each, the final relation will be 1 plus 1 equals 0, because each one destroys the creativity of the other one. What did we want to do? We wanted to make a team where 1 plus 1 would be equal 3. That means Brian Jones, me, and both of us. And that was also valid for the people on the ground. And for this, you have to stop thinking that communication is about sharing ideas or facts. No, communication is about sharing experience. So you need to put people as different as possible together. People who will bring other personality, other experience, other ideas. But if you don't put respect, 
if you don't have enough humility to accept that the other one might be right, then the disaster will come. So respect and integrity and honesty was the key word in our training. In order to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of the other one, to put the other one in our own shoes, to see the world through the eyes of the other one. And like this, we could share our experience. We could build this relation where we had a third experience that belonged partially to one and partially to the other one. And this is probably what made our team so efficient.